Hey, my name is Jarrett, and my wife Jean and I are the lead pastors of Soul City Church right here in the heart of downtown Chicago. And I want to welcome you to Church Refresh. Church Refresh is honestly just an experiment in transformations designed to help you grow as you go with tools and resources like prayer and worship and reflection questions that are available to you all throughout the week, whenever, wherever you are. We, we just want to help you and the people in your world actually find and, and follow Jesus because that really is at the heart of everything that we're all about here. We want to help lead people into a transforming relationship with Jesus. That's our mission. And my prayer is that Church Refresh will help you do just that this week. Well, this last week, I came across a fascinating story that I had honestly never heard before. It's a story of a man named R.U. Darby. Darby lived in Pennsylvania during the gold rush days here in America. And like so many others in his day, Darby decided to stake his claim at, at striking it rich and discovering gold. So he traveled all the way to Colorado, staked a claim, and began digging by hand, by himself. Darby is a legit OG gold digger, right? He goes way back in this. But keep in mind, Darby had no idea what he was doing. He just knew that if he kept going and got lucky, he would be rich. But wouldn't you know it, within a few weeks, Darby actually struck gold. Not a ton, but enough to pay off his claim, pay off his tools, and to put some 20-inch rims on his wagon. So anyway, Darby goes back to Pennsylvania, gets his uncle, brings him back to Colorado with him, and they double down on their dream. They dug for months and months together, but they didn't find a single ounce of gold. Eventually, morally defeated and, and financially depleted, they, they quit. They just gave up. Sold all their tools and their land to some poor sucker for a couple hundred bucks and headed back home with their tails between their legs, like so many other stories of that day. It's kind of a bummer story, right? Well, it actually gets worse for Darby. Because remember that poor sucker that he sold everything to? Well, he went out, hired a geological expert to survey the land, and it turns out that Darby had failed to take into account fault lines. And what they found was that Darby and his uncle quit just three feet shy of one of the largest deposits of gold in the entire state of Colorado. He quit just three feet away. Oh, and that poor sucker that they sold the land to for a couple hundred bucks? He was a multimillionaire by the end of the year, simply by starting where Darby had quit. And it just got me thinking, I wonder, I wonder if you, like Darby, have, have just, you've ever felt like quitting before? You ever felt like just throwing in the towel? Maybe you do right now. And, and I don't just mean like, quitting a job or quitting on the city or quitting on golf because you know your handicap is just getting too high to count. What I'm actually talking about is something much deeper. What I'm talking about is quitting on God, giving up on faith, just giving in to cynicism. Listen, during difficult days like the ones that, that we're walking through right now where you don't see God coming through like you might hope or imagine, it is so easy to want to quit and throw in the towel to walk away. I get it. When you look at the challenges that you or, or, or your family are personally facing during this time, that with seemingly no end in sight, it's easy to understand why you'd want to quit. When you think about, just zoom out a little bit, you think about the fires raging in California, the hurricanes in the Southeast, continued systemic abuses of power amidst a global pandemic and a financial recession, it's no wonder why some folks find it hard to find God these days. Which, which brings up a question that I'm sure just about all of us have considered to one degree or another when it comes to God. Why should you keep going when things aren't going great? Why should you keep going with God when it doesn't seem like things are going all that great in your life? Why should you still believe? Why should you still trust? Honestly, why would you keep on going with God when, to quote that old hymn of our faith, it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year? Come on, that was, come on. If that's good, come on. Listen, in all seriousness, I think that this is one of those crossroad kind of questions. Why should I keep going with God when things are not going great? 
This is why Paul's words from Philippians 3 are so important and maybe just what you need to hear today. So here's what I want you to do. Grab a Bible and I want you to open to Philippians chapter 3 or open up a tab to Philippians chapter 3. As we've explored already in this teaching series, the book of Philippians is not a book. It's actually a letter written by the Apostle Paul to a church in the city of Philippi. But it was written from a jail cell. Paul was in prison because of what he believed, with no promise of when he'd ever be let out. Listen, things were not going great for Paul. Just consider that for a second. You'd think that because of all that Paul was doing for God, that God would protect him from this. But nevertheless, there Paul was, in prison, writing to his friends about why he was committed to keep on going with God, even though things were not going that great. Now, I want to give you some like super quick context into the beginning of Philippians chapter 3. Paul spends the first part of this section talking about all of his spiritual qualifications. It's a real like humble brag moment for Paul. He explains how according to the requirements of religion, he finished top of his class. He had done it all and he did it all perfectly. And how he had thrown it all away just to know Jesus and to experience a transforming relationship with him. And that's where we actually pick up in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. I want you to read along with me. It says this. Paul says about this receiving of the fullness of a relationship with Christ. He says this, not that I have already obtained all of this or have arrived at my goal, but pay attention to this, I press on. I want you to remember that phrase. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what's behind and straining toward what is ahead, I, here's that phrase again, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is a powerful passage and an incredible perspective. I love Paul's perspective here. He's basically saying, I'm not there yet, but I'm pressing on. I ain't ain't arrived, but I ain't quitting. Things may not be going great, but I'm going to keep on going with God. I'm pressing on. And did you see what Paul said there towards the end of, of verse 13? Do you remember what he said there? He said, forgetting what is behind and straining or heading or focusing towards what is ahead. Now, just quick clarification here. What Paul is not saying here is that those things in my past didn't happen or don't matter. That's not what he means by forgetting. Look, all of us have things in our past we'd like to forget, right? Or try and pretend it never happened. There are quite a few things in my life that I wish I could just forget, right? Things that I said or, or things that I didn't say, things that I'd done or things I wish I had done. Look, it, it would be great if I could just forget those things. Look, I wish I could forget this pink on pink on pink ensemble that my mom made my brother and I wear for Easter one year. I can't ever seem to forget that. That's not what Paul is talking about here. He's not talking about pretending like those things didn't happen. The word forgetting might better be translated to letting go. I'm letting go of the grip that my past has had on me. I refuse to stay stuck in what was. I choose to accept what is, and I move forward in faith to what will be. I won't let any part of my past, no problems in my present, no fears about my future, keep me from the life that God has for me. I won't quit, Paul says. I am pressing on. This is Paul's rallying cry for you and for me in the difficult days that we find ourselves in. And it's simply this, and you might want to jot this down. Let this be your little mantra for this week. When life presses in, you press on. When life and the pressures, the realities of your circumstances are pressing in, what do you do? You press on. When life presses in, when things are hard, when things aren't going, great. You keep going. You don't give up. You press on. The fullness of your life in God is found by moving forward in faith. When life presses in, as it will, as it may be right now in this moment, you press 
on. I love the language that Paul uses. It kind of encompasses this idea. He uses the language of a race to describe our journey with God. Pressing on, he says, to win the prize. Now, Paul no doubt was familiar with the Greek Olympic Games and may have even seen one of the many marathons that were held in that area. Now, I love this imagery because I, like some of you, have experienced it personally. In fact, if you know me, you know where this is already going. I actually brought with me the medal from the very first marathon that I ever ran. Okay, it's the only marathon I ever ran, but doesn't it sound better when I say the first marathon that I ever ran? Because technically, it's still true. Anyway, for anyone who's ever run a marathon or who's had to push themselves physically or mentally or emotionally, you get it, right? I had to press on before I could put this on. I had to press on before I could ever put this on. I had to press on in my training. I had to press on when it wasn't fun anymore, which was like 20 minutes into the marathon for me. I had to press on when I got to mile 18 and I saw Carrie, one of our Soul City elders. Carrie was actually running that year with me. But when I saw Carrie at mile 18 in Pilsen, she'd already finished the race, made it home, showered, and was walking to brunch with her husband, Brandon. I had to press on. I had to press on when I saw others around me quitting. I had to press on when all I wanted to do was quit. See, there's a reason they don't hand these things out to you at the starting line. It's so you remember that there is a goal. There's a reason you got into all this. And you won't fully get to experience it if you quit. The same is true of your life with God. Jesus never promised that this life with God would be easy. In fact, he was very clear that all of us will experience that pressing in on us. You will experience setbacks and letdowns, heartaches and heartbreaks. Things are not always going to go great. You know this. But the question is, when it's not going great for you, will you keep going? When life presses in, will you press on? Will you move forward? forward in faith, knowing that one day you will cross the finish line of your life. All of us do. And when that moment comes for you, will you have lived your life? Will you have run your race with God as your goal and Christ as your prize? So my encouragement to you this week is is simply this. Press on. Will you press on? Don't don't miss this. I don't want you to miss this. Don't give up on a God who's never given up on you. Don't you ever give up on a God who has never once given up on you. I know this is not what you expected. I know this may feel like more than you can handle. I know you may want to quit. I get it. But this week, would you be willing to press on, to keep on going with God? to put one foot in front of the other. If you need support, ask for it. If you need to borrow the faith of others, do it. But whatever you do, don't quit. Because God has more in store for you in this life and beyond if you just press
Thank you for joining us for week three of Church Refresh. I love the way we're rethinking church in these days, and I'm so glad you're a part of it. Maybe there's people you know that you'd want to share this with. And if you want to continue with more worship, prayer, reflection questions, resources throughout the week, I want to encourage you to go to soulcitychurch.com slash churchrefresh. Go to our site, soulcitychurch.com slash Church Refresh, and there you'll find all that you need to keep on growing throughout this week. And it's actually a place where you can give. You know, this wouldn't be happening. We would not be able to do this and keep pressing on as a church if it weren't for the faithful folks who joyfully give to the mission of this church. Do you know that our church right now is in a season where we're actually supporting and giving of our resources some $5,000 to our partner school here in the neighborhood so that every kid can have Chromebooks and technology and all that they need to excel in this crazy school year. You're doing that, we're doing that. When you give to this church, it goes way beyond these walls, especially 
in these days. So if you want to give, you can go to soulcitychurch.com slash church refresh and you can do that there. I would encourage you to do so. I don't want you to miss next week. We're going to wrap up and conclude this study in the book of Philippians. It's going to be an incredible time together that you do not want to miss. Until then, I pray that God would wreck your life with his incredible love and grace. We love you and we miss you, Soul City.